Welcome once more to my twilight world of secret fears. Those fears lying deep in our imagination. Pause to think. If the lighting in your home goes wrong, you're happy to call an electrician. If something goes wrong with your car, you're happy to take it to a garage. After all, that's what those people, those places are for. Yet, when illness comes, there are many of you who dread going to the place especially designed to help you, the hospital. Such a person is Mary, the lady in this story. Mary may have to have an operation. Not pleasant, of course, but why does Mary have a special fear? After all, the operation would be strictly routine, wouldn't it? Splendid. Gloves. Thank you. Let's begin, then. You, are you the student? Yes, sir. Come round here. You'll only see my back's out from where you're standing. Right. Been in the theatre before? No, sir. Well, if you're going to faint, do it now. Give us good warning. Can't have you falling into the works. This operation is an appendicectomy. Yes, sir. Look and learn. Mary, for God's sake. Mary. I'm going to phone the doctor. No, you're not. It's not that serious, really. Food poisoning, probably. Food poisoning? I hardly think so. But even if you're right, you can still see the doctor. No. No, thank you, Derek. So what are you going to do? What do you mean? Well, you're going to lie there in bed and let it get worse and worse? It's not getting worse and worse. Show me where it hurts. I've shown you. Show me again. Uh, It's here. (laughs) Don't do that. I reckon it's appendicitis. I had mine out when I was a kid. Oh, bully for you. No, no, what I, what I mean is that's where the pain was. Let me call the doctor. No. Mary, you're being stupid. If it is appendicitis... It isn't. But if it is and you don't get it soon... It isn't to, appendicitis. Let me call the doctor. I said... No. Now, it happens to be the case that no matter what successes a surgeon achieves inside his patients, as it were, the patients themselves regard operations as absolute failures if they get left with heavy scars. So... First thing, we want to ensure that after we finish, the wound joins up properly. How do we do this? Blue dye, sir. Correct. A mark here and here. Match up the lines when we're stitching. Good. I am not seeing the doctor. I I am not going to hospital. This is my pain. Leave it alone. Oh, please, God, let it be food poisoning. Derek? Derek? Yeah? What's the time? Nine o'clock. Aren't you going to work? No, I'm looking after you. I don't need looking after. Also, I'm waiting. Waiting what for? I've been on the phone. Doctor's coming round as soon as he can. I'm sorry I had to, Mary. No, you didn't. I told you. Yes. I will refuse to see him. I mean it. Mary, now that is stupid. I'm not being fair. Fair? Don't you talk about being fair. I meant on yourself. No, you didn't. Look, I... I do not want to see the doctor. I refuse to see him. Now, why can't you accept that? Because I love you. Oh, don't, don't give me all that crap. If you had any kind of affectionate feeling for me, you would, you would respect my wishes. You wouldn't cheat on me, damn you! Mary, why won't you see the doctor? Why, what is it you're so frightened of? Tell me. It's very simple. If I see him, he'll quite possibly say that I have to go to hospital. Ah, so you admit... Uh, right, OK. I understand. When was the last time you went to hospital? I mean, you've never been ill all the time. You've been married, not seriously ill. No. Well, what about before? I've never had to stay in one. I've been there just for little things and to visit. But nonetheless, hospitals scare you. Yes, huh? they always have. And they scare me a hundred times more so right now. Well, that'll be... Uh... Well, I don't really mean. It's not appendicitis. You won't have to go to hospital. Must be calm. Sing a song to myself. One green bottle hanging on the wall. One green bottle hanging on the wall. No, 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 no. You start with ten. Or twelve. Twelve. God, you bastard, Derek. Twelve, ten green bottles 
Hang on, Paul. Darling. Darling, is it? Dr. Pearson's here. Hello. Hello. I think I have appendicitis. Sometimes, Mr. Russell, appendicitis doesn't require immediate action, but I'm fairly certain that your wife has it in an acute form. Uh, Important that you get her to hospital straight away. Right. I'll can not... you take her in yourself? Well, I can. If she'll let me. Ah, hospital phobia, eh? Yeah, I know she seemed very calm. Well, fairly calm. But it might be hard work getting her out of the house. Yes. I understand. Here we are. One for now, without liquid if possible. Others as backup, just in case she's not admitted when you take her. But I think she almost certainly will be. Thank you. Hope all goes well. There's no need to worry, though. Routine operation. Tools of the trade. Scissors, dissecting forceps, tissue forceps, knife. Scissors held thus, so when not in use can be left to hang on the ring finger, while the other fingers do their work. For forceps, thumb and first finger. Knife thus. Is that all clear? Yes, sir. Right, let us commence. The incision. Firm, but gentle. Mary, please. I thought I was brilliant with the doctor, didn't you? How marvellously meek and submissive I become when confronted by a medical practitioner. Mary, you have acute appendicitis. You should be in the hospital by now. I'm not going to hospital. Why? Because I'm frightened. Why? Why are you frightened? I don't know. Everybody's frightened of hospitals. Mary, look. The doctor gave me these pills. Don't be relaxed. No, thanks. Please take them. They won't send me to sleep. No, just calm me down, that's all. All three? No. Yes. All right. <coughs> but I am not going to hospital. There. Incision complete. Thank you, nurse. Three inches, by the way, should be quite sufficient. Yes, sir. Now, the next step is to catch the edges of the aponeurosis and retract them. True or false? Oh, uh, true, sir. After that, we'll separate the fibres and retract them, divide the peritoneum and lift it. You still chipper? Oh, absolutely, sir. I'm fine, sir. Fine. It's time. Come on, we've got to go. Mary. No. What is it that really frightens you? The operation? Yes, I think so. All right, so what you're worried about is the risk, the slight risk. It's not a slight risk. But, Mary, it is. It's a routine operation. No, you don't understand it. It's not that, not really. Well, then what? Surgeons? Nurses? Knives? Needles? Yes. There's this... I've been having a dream. Oh, come on. Oh, well, I knew you'd take that attitude. No, I, I'm sorry. Let's hear it. It's the same dream, it seems to me, that the last three nights. It's like a memory of something, a, a very muddled memory, and yet, and yet very real. But it's something that hasn't happened, well, not yet. A warning, perhaps. And the dream takes place in a hospital? Yes, the operating theatre in the main. I can picture it so clearly. Picture it, hear it, feel it. The tops of the faces, the green of the gowns, the soft, metallic clanging of the surgical instruments on the trolley that... Deep, deep red. Quiet conversation. The cold, the cold. Each night and every night the same. Don't make me go, Derry. Please. And what exactly happens? Oh, it's, it's not easy to tell. Uh, I mean, the, there's an operation going on, and there are surgeons and nurses. And you're sure you're the patient? Oh, yes. I'm the patient. And is there anything in particular that makes it so frightening? I don't know. I'm not sure. There's a voice I can hear. Whose voice? I don't know. A, a woman's. Mary, but... what scares you is probably the fact that all this stuff is happening to you in your dream and you're aware of it. The knives and scissors and blood and what have you. 
Whereas, of course, in reality, when you're actually having the operation, you'll be out cold and not aware of what's going on. Reality, thank God, is much more pleasant. Yes, all right. But, oh, but it's not just that. I think somehow something goes wrong. I can feel this appalling pain. Yes, that's a real pain. The appendicitis, you're feeling it in your sleep. No, but this is so much worse. Well, you know, dreams distort reality in every way conceivable. Silly fears get enlarged to absurd proportions. Listen, anything could happen to you in this dream of yours, but I tell you, if you don't get into hospital very soon, you're going to die. And that's for real. You're going to die. Do you understand? Firm, but gentle. I make a point, you know, regarding every piece of tissue and blood as if it were my own. There we are. Nurse, thank you. And very soon we'll have entry into the abdomen. There. Now to find the appendix. Fasten your belt. I'm feeling incredibly tired. Here, let me help you. Don't you believe that dreams can foretell the future? No. Well, you should. A year or more before we'd even met, I had a dream about our marriage. A recurring dream just like this one. Less worrying, I hope. So when I proposed, you said to yourself, what the hell, let's make the dream come true. You never did propose, remember? Not really. Look, Mary, you'll, you'll feel no pain. You must believe me. You won't know anything about it. The anaesthetic will knock you clean out. There'll be no pain. First thing you'll be aware of is coming to in the recovery room. Oh, Derek. The whole thing will be over. Mission accomplished. Yes. What if I don't come to, though? Oh, God. But it could happen. Oh, yes. And if it does, they slap your face and pour black coffee down your throat. All right? Well, now, we've located the cecum. What next? We look for the terminal part of the ilium. Good. And that? And in the lower angle of where these join? There the appendix sits. So. Scissors. You cut away one or two adhesions. Here. And here. And another. And very soon we'll be able to remove the little fellow. I know what you did. You gave me an overdose, didn't you? That's right. Wanted the pleasure of bumping you off before the surgeon had Derek. a chance. It was just to calm your nerves a bit. Three pills the doctor recommended. A liar, Derek Russell, a liar and a bastard. Oh, if you don't like your marriage partner, you've only got your recurring dreams to blame. Actually, I, well, for whatever reason, you don't feel quite so anxious, no? Yes, I do. Deep down inside somewhere, underneath all these bloody pills. As soon as I wake up again, I... Oh, my... Oh, my God. What's the matter? Wake up. Wake up, that... That's what the voice is saying in the dream. That's what... Mary. <gasps> Stop the car. No. Why? What are you going on about? Stop. Please. I, I know why I'm having the dream. What it's telling me. Mary, for the last <coughs> time, you're having that dream because of what's happening inside you. No. The pain you're feeling is helping to trigger off. No. It's a voice. A woman's voice. Wake up. Wake up, she says. Mary. God, it must be when the operation's over in the day. In the recovery room, and I... Oh, no, no, I'm not sure. It's all so confused. But she keeps on saying the words, repeating them in this... Oh, in this desperate, awful way. That's you, Mary. Trying to wake yourself up because you find the dream unpleasant. No. Oh, God, take me back, Derek. Please, if I have this operation, I'll... I'll never wake up again. I'll never... I'll, I'll be in some kind of a co coma. That's what the dream... Look, the bloody dream's not trying to tell you anything. Oh, you keep on having it because you've got appendicitis. And therefore you're thinking about hospitals. And you're frightened of hospitals, which is understandable no, in a way. But that's no, all there is to me it. Back. Don't take me back home. I can't do that. Please. Oh. Help. Help. Help me. Please help. Shut up. Oh, please. Look, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Mary. I, I can't take you back. Here it comes. 
the offending item. Still with us? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Next step is to wheel the needle and thread. True or false? True, sir. Uh, false, sir. We clean up around the cavity. Correct. If you'd care to look, or even if you wouldn't, there's some pale yellow matter that needs clearing away. Not unlike custard. There. See? Boldness. Is this it? Looks more like a prison. Right. Here. I'll undo your belt. Take me back. There we are. Let's go, shall we? I'm begging you, Derek. No use. Please. No. Do you remember our wedding day? Driving to the registry office in that wreck that kept on stalling. Mary. I thought we'd never get there. Come on. Comfortable? Yes. Got everything you need? No, I'm short of a disguise in a getaway car. <laughs> Cheerio, then. Yes. Cheerio. See how brave I'm being? Yes, darling. You look awfully tired. Well, you'd be tired if you'd been drugged up to the eyeballs. Lie back and get some sleep. No, thank you. You'll be all right, I promise. Oh, of course. Good heavens, I'll be fine. There'll be no pain. No pain. Minimal risk. I'm going to ring the sister at five o'clock. Yes, you do that. She'll tell me when I can come and see you. Just think, in a little while... It'll be all over. Just like a bad dream. Cheerio, then. And now to close the wound. You done your own sock, student? No, sir. Start doing so. Well, wait till you get home. <laughs> get in some practice. Right, two kinds of needles, straight and curved. A curved needle is required initially here for the depths of the wound. Nurse? Thank you. As you see, I have a number of needles, all in line, threaded and ready for action. But no thimble. Mrs. Russell? Mrs. Russell? Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Mrs. Russell. Oh. Uh, hello. I'm the anaesthetist. Oh, ye yes. I'll be the last person you'll see before your operation. Yes. I can tell you're a wee bit anxious. <laughs> can you? When we shook hands. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, sweaty. Yes, clever of you. What is it you're worried about? Well, since you ask, I'm... I'm worried that I won't wake up after the operation. You mean you won't wake up for a long time? Or even won't wake up ever. Oh, well. Yes, yes, I know. I need to have no fear on that score. Absolutely none at all. Um, I've got to give you sufficient anaesthetic, obviously, to keep you asleep for the duration of the operation, but no more than that. You'll wake up, I assure you. Uh, have you ever been given a general anaesthetic before? No. Well, there's really nothing, nothing to, be... to worry about. Yes, I know. I know. Please. Oh, please, God, help me. Let me wake up when it's all over. Please, God. Ten green bottles hanging on the wall. Ten green... Mary? <laughs> Only met a half an hour ago. We're on first name terms already. Mary? Nearly, nearly time, is it? You got it in one. The porter's coming to take you to the operating theatre now. Did you hear about Mr. Fazakali? Yeah, poor devil. When you work in hospital, you should expect decent treatment, shouldn't you, if you fall ill sudden? Nurse, lie back, Mary, dear. Think of England. 
Five. Ten green bottles. Nine green bottles. This is my pain. This is my body. Take. Eat. Oh, yes, I'd be a believer if I could, but to be one now. Oh, Lord. I rather smacks of opportunism. How are you doing, Mary? All right? Good girl. <sighs> Sudden lift. Nurse? N- nurse, what is it, Mary? I'm not all right, actually. You'll be fine. A highly experienced surgeon does it in his sleep. Here we go. Third floor, linenware, lingerie. Nurse. Yes, Mary? I'm frightened. No, you're not. You're a brave girl. I don't want to have this operation. Nonsense. We've not brought you this way for nothing. I don't have to have it. Of course you do, Mary. What I mean is no one can compel me. You can't force me. If I want to, I can go back to the ward. I can get all my things. Oh, no, you don't want to do that. You want to get yourself healthy again. But if I want to... No, no. When you go back to the ward, go, it's with your appendix in a jar. It is us. Help. Where are the reserves of courage, the inner strength, God damn it, to help the people find when they absolutely need it? That they never thought they possessed. How much further? Nearly there, darling. Left, right, and left again. Poor Mr. Fazakali. I like the man. Uh, left. Right. And left again. We're there. Hello again, Mrs. Russell. How are you feeling? So-so. She's feeling fine, aren't you, Mary? Excellent. OK, what I'm going to do in a moment, Mary, is put a tiny little needle into you here. It really won't hurt. Just feel a bit cold, that's all. Good girl now. Um, hang on a moment. Oh, you bastard, Derek, you bastard. Right, now clench your fist and unclench it. Clench it again, very tight. Here we go. Steady. Steady. Oh, I'm sorry. Mary, I'm going to have to try that again. I've changed my mind. I want to go back Don't to the Don't be silly now. Be a good girl, Mary. Try and relax. Now, clench your fist again. <sighs> clench it tight. Doesn't hurt. <clears throat> that is my body. They can't operate on me. I'm not going to sleep. I refuse. Now, I refuse. the next thing, Mary... I want you to breathe in some gas for me. Good girl. I refuse to have this operation. Here we are. Not going to sleep. Not going to sleep. Breathe in, please. Good deep breath. (laughs) And another one. <laughs> Mary. You'll be right, Mary. Mary. Still awake, you see. Still awake. You see. You see. Fight it, Mary. This is your body. Has she gone? No. Still awake. in bed on a Sunday morning. But I'm awake. And I've been asleep for... how long? I've no idea. And so... 
It must all be over. And when I open my eyes, I... um, not yet. Oh, what bliss. But when I open my eyes, there'll be a nurse there, not, not Derek yet. There'll be a nurse there with a smile and a cup of tea. Bliss. The operation's over. Successfully, I have to assume. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Mission accomplished. And I didn't really make too much of a fool of myself. I hope. And anyway, what was I expected to do? Who, who cares? Come and see me soon, Derek. You bastard. Half awake, not asleep, not dreaming. Perhaps. Splendid. Let's begin then. Not asleep. You, are you the student? Yes, sir. Well, come round here. You'll only see my backside from where you're standing. Not asleep. This operation is an appendicectomy. Look and learn. Not asleep. First thing, we want to ensure that after we finish, the wound joins up properly. <gasps> How do we do this? Blue dye, sir. Correct. A mark here where I'm going to make the incision, and then across that mark here, here, and here. <gasps> Tools of the trade. Scissors. Dissecting forceps. Tissue forceps. Knife. Not asleep. Not awake. I can't move my eyes. I can't move my hand. But I can feel. I can feel. Wake up. Scissors held thus. Wake up. Wake up. Tell them. For forceps, thumb and first finger. Wake up. Knife thus. Jesus. Help me. Is that all clear? Yes, sir. Right, let us commence. <gasps> the incision. Firm, but gentle. Allow me to reassure you that what happened to Mary is quite impossible. You have nothing to fear. I have every confidence in telling you this. After all, I was told by a well, by someone who ought to know. Mary was played by Hannah Gordon, Derek, Michael Cochran, the artist, Oriel Smith, the doctor and porter, Danny Schiller, and the nurse by Heather Emanuel. A routine operation was written by Martin Wade and directed by Martin Jenkins. <laughs>